A charge of intentionally causing serious injury is a very serious charge to face and the consequences if you're found guilty are uh, really significant. The maximum penalty for intentionally causing serious injury is 20 years imprisonment and commonly you would receive a prison term of at least a number of years if you're found guilty. The legal definition of just what is a serious injury changed recently. The new definition is an injury that's life-threatening or an injury that is substantial and protracted. Now a serious injury can also be made up of the cumulative effect of numerous injuries. There are many different defences available to a charge of intentionally causing serious injury. The classic defence would be self-defence, where a person caused serious injury to another but when they did so they are acting in defence of themselves. Other defences would be a factual dispute, not having the requisite intent, or being mentally impaired and, and other defences. I once had a case where my client and his wife were charged with intentionally causing serious injury as against a third person. Initially the police charged all three people and then they dropped the charges as against the third person and he became their star witness in the case. And because he was formerly a suspect, he had been interviewed and also given a witness statement. By the time I got to cross-examine him at committal, he'd already given many different versions and there are inconsistencies in between his police interview, what he said in his statement. The best example of that is that the witness claimed that in the course of this fight he'd been hit with a, a pistol. So at committal I asked him questions about how that felt, that he was familiar with the feeling and he felt the weight of the metal smashing into his skull and it's, it was a sensation that he'd never forget. What the evidence showed at trial was that there was a plastic toy pistol at the scene and he had, the witness had incorporated this into his story and was trying to use it uh, against my client. And DNA testing eventually came back and none of my client's DNA was on the plastic pistol and of course had he hit the witness with it he wouldn't have had the sensations that he described. We were able to use that, many other inconsistencies, to put forward my client's side of the story, which was that he and his wife had been attacked by this person who came out of his apartment with a dog and an iron bar, and in fact had caused serious injuries to my client himself. One of the most dramatic things that happened as a result was that um, confronted with these inconsistencies and different versions is that he lost his temper in the witness box slammed his hands down on the witness box and had to be warned by the judge that he wasn't able to behave that way. And in a case where our case was that he had lost his temper in a similar fashion, um, that sort of eruption in the courtroom was invaluable. We've been running trials in cases of intentionally causing serious injury for many, many years. And there's a team of lawyers here who work on cases like that to put your best case forward. With any charge of intentionally causing serious injury, if there's strong evidence against you and it's likely to be a guilty plea, the first step your lawyer should take is to see whether it can be downgraded to recklessly causing serious injury and your case could then be heard in the magistrate's court where there are limits to the penalties that can be imposed. If you've been charged with intentionally caused serious injury, the first step is to talk to a lawyer to discuss the options that you have and you should give us a call to see how we can help you.